coming from Capitol Hill, Seattle today. I am so excited for this video. I am actually visiting several LGBTQ plus businesses that I feel like you should definitely support. Even outside of Pride Month, obviously these businesses see a ton of support in the month of June. But I wanted to show you some of these hidden gems and show you that we should maybe support throughout the entire year. So we're gonna start out really strong with I think some wine tasting. Samuel. Samuel, so nice to meet you, you both. Excited to have you today. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to wine taste. This is gonna be the best day ever. <laughs> We're gonna have fun. Our first vintage at a Little Cellars was back in 2012. We opened our brick and mortar store on Capitol Hill, which was our first tasting room location back in 2016. Since then, we've opened locations in Ballard and Queen Anne as well. Perfect little oasis where you get surrounded by wonderful wine, amazing food that pairs well with that wine. We kind of bring people here to gather in the city to enjoy wines that you typically find in Eastern Washington. I would definitely have to say our most popular wine is probably a coat of arms. That's our flagship Bordeaux style blend. In terms of favorite food options, I would have to say probably the charcuterie and cheese, but we also have a lot of folks who really enjoy our European tin fish program. So folks sometimes come in specifically to pair sardines, mackerel, octopus, and other delicious seafood with wines that they think go well with it. We wanted to bring the wine to these neighborhoods, be a little more of an urban type setting. When we first opened here at a little sellers, we actually won new business of the year um, from the GSBA. Uh, that came with a $5,000 grant and we decided we really wanted to give that grant back in some way. So we used that grant to kind of kick off this project, which is our Scholar line of wines. So we give a portion of the proceeds since we released it. We've given over $10,000 to the GSBA scholarship fund. So we're really excited about that. It was very important for us when we first opened to be in the LGBTQ, like the center of the neighborhoods up here. Diversity in the wine industry has struggled for years as it has in many industries. Industries, and I think it's important to, uh, to to represent in your industry, but also make a fantastic product and just be a great business at the same time while you're doing that. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to taste test now. I mean, come on, it's one of my favorite things to do. So let's do it. Let's get to drinking. Ready for some wine? Yes. Start you off with our 2022 Sauvignon Blanc. Some beautiful acidity comes out of that one. It's gonna have those like grassy notes, kind of like a New Zealand Sauv Blanc. Ooh, this is absolutely amazing. 10, 10 recommend. 2022 Dry Rosé. It's rosé all day, right? And then we're gonna come out here with our 2017 Coat of Arms. It's our flagship Bordeaux blend, our top award winning line of wines. You always have to try Coat of Arms when you come into a little cellars. Here we go. Swirl it. Smell, ooh, okay, that has a nice aroma we like. That is very, very nice. You know what I want with this? A good steak. And we'll finish you off with a very unique varietal to see on its own. It's our 2018 Mouvedra. Mm, I have a favorite. It's this one. This is absolutely delicious. I don't know what to say. I mean, come here, taste test all the wine, take home a bottle, join the wine club. I might after this experience. <laughs> absolutely delicious. I'm a big red wine gal, so I'm gonna say these two are my favorite. And, but I'm definitely gonna go with this last one. I, I think this is, we're gonna give it an 11 out of 10. And I come up with this scale, so just deal with it. It's a good day, you guys. Hard day on the job. Super exciting, there is actually a pop-up happening with permanent jewelry. I've always wanted to do this. I realize that it means it's permanent, but this is exciting. So here we go, and we're meeting our next business right upstairs. Hi, Come I'm Kelly. Over. Hi, Jordan, so great to meet you. So great to meet Take you. Take a seat, let's go through some of our options. My name is Jordan Ross. I am Seattle's um, first male linker. What we mean by permanent is we are removing the need for a clasp. It's permanent in a sense of you can keep it on for as long as you want to, right? It is removable. You can always take a small pair of scissors or even like a nail clipper and just remove the small ring that is welded shut. It's a very sentimental and meaningful connection to have with someone. And so we like to kind of say it's like the modern day friendship bracelet, right? So Instagram really is the best way to find where we'll be at for the upcoming month and get in contact with us if you'd like to host a party or a pop-up yourself. Take a look at 
Um, what we have for inventory, so we have four different styles of chain. Everything is a solid, either white or yellow gold. I've made a decision and I've picked, what is it called again, Jordan? So this is our Figaro chain in 14 karat yellow gold. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But like Jordan said, you can become kind of addicted to this and you can layer and you can get friendship bracelets and it just feels like such an awesome like girl date experience or you know with whoever your special someone is or just do it by yourself like I am okay Absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh look at these cool glasses that you wear when you're getting everything you know welded on so here we go Game on. so now that I've got the grounding wire attached I am just gonna go ahead and swoop this right underneath your hand okay just like that and this little screen is gonna protect my eyes and just that tiny little tip is what makes the magic happen. Just like that. That's it? Oh my God. Oh my gosh, you have to check out Link by Lou. Seriously, hit up Jordan. He is all in the Seattle area and you can figure out a pop-up or you know something special to do with a friend or yourself. I have seriously always wanted to do permanent jewelry. It is all the rage right now, so I feel so incredibly special right now that I have this. And what a fun memory, and seriously, this was such a fun day in Capitol Hill. I cannot say enough about these two businesses, but the fun doesn't stop. I have a couple more, and so on to our next day of fun. Okay, I'm just getting to Pike Place Market, truly one of my favorite stops in Seattle. And the next place I'm going to is called Bite Society, apparently the perfect stop for gifts and more. Let's learn more from the owners and it's a sunny Seattle day, so no complaints. A married co-ownership, I mean. Yeah. How, how does that work? <laughs> We're sticking good. Right? We're good. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Lindy Hensley. I'm one of the owners of Bite Society. We make cookies, snacks, pickles, candies, all kinds of things that we put in gift baskets. Then we sell them individually. And our secret sauce is we work with tattoo artists to make our packaging. The star of the show has to be the cookies. They are such fun tins. The art is great. The flavor is fantastic. Our potato chips are a real hit. If you want something different and you want people to innovate, I think small business is the place. Whether it's food or technology, when people are small, they're really nimble and we're a perfect example of that. Chocolate chip cookie? Chocolate chipotle. Oh. It's a little bit spicy. This is so good. It has a little hint of a kick. I thoroughly enjoy that. Sesame shortbread. This one's my favorite so far, the sesame. Mm. Good thing I didn't eat lunch. I am in the International District going to my next stop, Reboot Theater, and this stop is going to be all about the arts, and I'm going to talk to some people that are rehearsing for a play, Peter Pan, one of my favorites. I'm so excited, so let's go inside and meet all of the amazingly talented people. Hi, my name is Jasmine Joshua. I use they, them pronouns, and I have the honor of being the artistic director of Reboot Theater Company. Our mission is to test new interpretations of established works through non-traditional casting, design, and methods yet to be discovered. Basically what we do is we take stories that we already know and we find where context can change the story. We don't change any words, we don't change any characters, we don't change any pronouns, but what happens if we just look at it like this? Is it better? Is it worse? Or is it just different? I don't know. You have to find out. So our ninth production that we're putting up is Peter and the Star Catcher, which is based on a novel by Dave Barry. And actually, before we even touched it, it's kind of a reboot in and of itself because it is the origin story of Peter Pan. So it is taking the classic story of Peter Pan and putting a little twist on it. I want audiences to feel welcome at my theater and I want audiences to be welcoming in my theater. And I mean that not only to the human beings that they are seeing and the human beings that they are um, enjoying the experience with, but also welcoming to whatever ideas that might be different. And you know, I always say like, this does not have to be the definitive version. This doesn't have to be your favorite version. But if you walk out of here saying, you know, I never thought about that, that is a success.
I had an absolute blast at Reboot Theater on Jackson. Jasmine, thank you so much for showing me around. And I am definitely coming here for a date night. Like, who knew that this existed? I did not know and I learned so much. So if you want more information, obviously look at the YouTube description. And as always, like and subscribe and I will see you in my next adventure. Bye.